Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So let's talk about bass traps again, because if you're about to build your own, or if you're thinking about building your own, obviously one of the main things you want is for them to actually work. You don't want to do all that effort for nothing. So within deciding how many to build, how deep to make them, and where to put them, one of the most confusing questions is often what type and what density of insulation material to go for. Is it better to go with something low density or does choosing a high density insulation material actually work better? So that's what I wanna clear up in this video. So by the end, you know exactly what to pick and why. But to help you out even further, I actually created the complete guide to base traps and base trapping that you can download completely for free at the link in the description. This is basically a kind of overview and encyclopedia of all the different base traps out there. So obviously porous absorption insulation material base traps, but also resonance traps, combined traps, active traps. I've compiled them all into a single document for you. So it is really easy for you to figure out if you're building your own, what you actually need to do, what type works best for your room, or if you're buying off the shelf, what kind of base trap you're actually looking at, because that can sometimes be quite confusing. But more than that, it also tells you how they work, how many you need for your room, where to actually put them, so that you can really decide what type is best for your room, depending on the configuration and the exact problems that you're facing. So before you do anything, before you buy any material, before you buy any type of base trap out there, I really want you to check out my complete guide to base traps and base trapping at the link in the description. But let's get back to this question of the low density versus high density debate in bass traps. And the first thing that I wanna say here is that when I say bass traps, I talk about porous absorber panels, and they typically have a material depth of six inches or more. Anything less than that, and we can't really call them bass traps because they don't absorb any low frequencies no matter what you do with them, all right? So when we're talking base traps, we're talking six inches or more. And unfortunately, there is some confusion out there about whether a low density or a high density material works better. And the best reason I could find for why that is, is because there are so many forum posts on the type of insulation material that you should use. And sometimes people outright say that a high density material will work better at absorbing low frequencies than a low density material. There are even some professionals chiming in here or there saying that they actually use a high density material in their off the shelf products and that for them this works best. But what I want to do with Acoustics Insider and what is important for me is to actually give you recommendations of approaches that have the highest likelihood of working. So I've got a model of a 100 millimeter, 10 centimeter or four inches deep absorber modeled here to start off with because often the debate actually starts with these shallow depths. And we've got four different densities here. So this is around 6,000 Pascal seconds per meter squared, 10,000, 15,000, and 30,000. That equates roughly to 15 kilograms per meter cubed, 30 kilograms per meter cubed, 40 kilograms per meter cubed, and 70 kilograms per meter cubed. So we're really looking at a fairly low density, a light material versus a high density, a very heavy insulation material. There's no air gap involved in this model, Right now, these panels are basically stuck right on the wall. And so looking at the blue curve going through the green, the red, and the yellow, what we can see is that in the low frequencies, there is some difference, but it's not actually that huge. The difference is maybe 10 to 15%. Where the difference really shows up, though, is kind of in the mid frequencies, right? So 500 to 1000 hertz. And here we're looking more at around 20 to 25% difference between the lowest density and the highest density. And in fact, here, where there's a more significant difference, the highest density actually performs worst. But let's step this argument up to a 
200 millimeter, 20 centimeter, or eight inches deep insulation material absorber, again, stuck right on the wall. Same densities, same gas flow resistivity. And again, in the lowest frequencies, there isn't that much difference. At about 50 hertz, we're looking at maybe 10% difference between the blue and the yellow, the lowest density and the highest density. But now in the lower mids, 200 hertz, we're already looking at 25 to 30% difference between the blue and the yellow, depending on which exact frequency you're looking at. Yeah, so as we're actually increasing the depth of our absorber, the difference between the lowest density and highest density material increases and the same pattern continues. So the highest density actually performs worst while the lowest density performs best. But let's step it up one more notch. So now we're looking at 40 centimeters or 16 inches of absorption. Again, directly on the wall. And now the difference between the highest and lowest density is really obvious almost across the entire low end and low mids. The lowest density always performs better than the highest density. But there's one important thing that none of these models actually show us, and that's what happens in the high frequencies. If we looked at this model and took it for what it shows us, we'd assume that all these configurations basically perfectly absorb high frequencies. But in practice, what happens is that the high density material actually becomes dense enough to start reflecting higher frequencies. You can expect energy to be reflected back because the surface is just so hard in relation to the air around it. So you might think that if we build an absorber that is, I don't know, 50 or 100 centimeters deep, so a full three to four feet, that we need a very low density material. And that's where another thing isn't shown here, and that is the stability, the rigidity of the material. Even at 6,000 Pascal seconds per meter squared or 15 kilograms per meter cubed, so the lowest density that we're shown here, this material is so weak in structure that it actually becomes quite difficult to build a large trap. You really need to stabilize the material with some added structure for it not to just fall in on itself and compress itself at the bottom of the absorber. So in practice, there are more things to consider than just the pure density, right? There's the construction to consider, and there's the high frequency absorption to consider as well. But then you might ask yourself, why do we have reports of companies using very high density material in their base traps? And the best explanation that I can come up with is that actually with the denser slabs, the denser bats of material, there is some sort of membrane effect happening as well. So basically the actual mat resonates and that helps with low end absorption. The problem that I see with this and why I don't recommend you try and replicate that is that it is very hard to predict which material actually does this properly. So with the products out there that use very dense material, what's probably going on is that they went through a very rigorous process of testing different, different materials and then by pure chance really discovered a certain material that gives them added absorption at low frequencies. But that only works with the exact material that they're using. So if you're building your own and you don't have access to that exact material and quite on the contrary, you're trying to decide with your available materials, which one is gonna work best, the most reliable thing you can do is to actually go with a lower dense material, a lower density material. And even in fact, the, the deeper you intend to make your trap, the lower you want that density to be. And of course the exact density that you then pick actually depends on the depth of your absorber, which you in turn decide based on how low in frequency you actually wanna make your absorber work. But as I just mentioned in general, the deeper you go, the lower density you want. And of course, if you want proper in-depth help with this, I have a whole course called Build a Better Base Trap that you can find at the link in the description as well as on my website, acousticsinsider.com, 
where I show you exactly how to decide what the best bang for the buck is when you're considering price and depth and just overall effectiveness. It also includes full step-by-step -step instructions on how to actually design and build your own, including extensive material lists for products that are available around the globe to get you started ASAP. So if you really want in-depth help with designing and building your own base trap, make sure you check that out at the link in the description or on my website. But I hope that clears up your question of whether to go for a low density or a high density material in your base trap. And so you know why you should go for a low density. With that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.